The fourth folder in your resource tree is called Paths. You can create a new path by clicking on Resources from your main menu and then clicking on Create Path, which is shift Control p or you can right-click on the Paths folder in your resource tree and select Create Path. Once you do, you'll be greeted with the Path Properties window for your current path. Now is a great time to name your path. As with previous naming conventions, right now you can create some sort of prefix for all of your paths. You can use the word path, you can use an underscore after that, or not. You can simply use the letter P. It's really up to you. Personally, I just use the full word path and then an underscore. At the top of the path properties window, you'll find your toolbar. The first icon will close the window and save any changes you've made. The next icon will undo the most recent change to your path. It's similar to Control z The next icon will clear your entire path starting from scratch. The icon after that will reverse your path direction. Next you'll have an icon for shifting your path. If you click on it, you'll get a Shift the Path window. Here you can shift your path horizontally and vertically in pixels. You can use positive and negative numbers to shift your path up, down, left, and right. After that, you'll find Mirror the Path Horizontally. This button will flip your path horizontally. After that, you'll find the icon for Flip the Path Vertically. It does the same thing, it just flips it vertically. Next, you'll find the button for Rotate the Path. If you click on it, you'll get a window for Rotate the Path. Here, you can type in the degree at which you want your path to rotate. After that, you'll find an icon for Scale the Path. If you click on it, you'll get a window for Scale the Path. Then you can scale your path in percentages, horizontally and vertically. The default is 100%. The next section of icons deals with shifting the view. This doesn't actually move your path anywhere, it just moves the viewpoint on your canvas. You can achieve the same result by middle clicking on the canvas and dragging it around. The next section has a Snap X and Snap Y input field. Similar to the Rooms property window, here you can just set your grid. And next to it, you'll have a button for toggling the grid on and off. The last button is actually kind of important. This will indicate which room you want to show as the background. If you click on it, you'll get a drop-down of each room you've created in your resource tree. Now that you know the toolbar, we can start creating a path. If you click anywhere on the canvas, you'll create a point which will snap to your grid. You'll create a red circle. A red circle denotes the current point on your path that you have selected. If you click again somewhere else, you'll see that the red circle now jumps to that position. The green square indicates the start point of your path. If you click another empty space in your room, the red circle will move again, leaving a blue circle in its wake. A blue circle is just another point on your path that is not the currently selected point, nor is it the start point. By now you'll probably notice that in the small panel on the left side, coordinates are being added. You can click through them now, and you can see the red circle will jump from point to point. If you'd like to fine-tune these points, you can just click and select one of them to highlight it, and then go down to the section that says X, Y, and SP. You should already have a pretty decent understanding of X and Y, but you may not know what SP means. This means speed. Right now it's set to 100. This means 100%. Later on in code, when you tell your objects to follow this path, you set a speed. And if that point is set to 100%, your object will move at 100% of that speed value. So let's say you've given your object the speed of 4. That means it'll move from point A to point B at the speed of 4, because we have it set to 100%. However, if we set the speed to 50%, your object will move at a speed of 2, which is 50% of 4. You can always go above 100 as well. You can set your speed to 200. Now your object will move at a speed of 8, which is double 4. There are three buttons next to X, Y, and Speed. The first button is Add. If you click on it, a new point will be created at the same spot that you have selected, but it'll be created at the bottom of your path list. The next button is Insert. Insert will also create a point on top of the one you have selected, however, it'll put it immediately after the point you have selected in the point list. So Add puts a point at the end of your list, and Insert will put a point in the middle of your list. The last button is Delete. Pretty self-explanatory, just select a point and click on delete and the point will go away. Below speed we have a section called connection kind. You have two radio buttons for straight lines and smooth curve. 
Straight lines just creates a linear path from point A to point B to point C and so on. However, if you want something to look a little more dynamic or smooth or curved, you can select Smooth Curve. You'll see now that your path is curved. Below Smooth Curve there's a section called Precision. Right now it's defaulted to 4. You can select a number between 1 and 8. This will determine how precise the curves are for your path. The last thing we need to cover is the check box on the right side of connection kind called closed. When checked, your path will be a closed circuit, which means your start and end point will be exactly the same. Your object will loop around your path continually. If your path is not closed, it'll have a start and end point separate from each other. When we get into code and start talking about pathing, you'll see that there are many other options we can add to this path. For instance, we could tell your object that when it reaches the end of a path, to turn around and go back the other way. That's just one example, and you'll have to watch the code tutorials to know how to manipulate this path. But I hope now that you have a basic understanding of how to create a path for your game using GameMaker Studio.